Good afternoon. This is Cesar, a martial artist, photographer, and a dad. I'm very thankful. This is a special day for me. Well, without this one of this person, I'm not going to be here. And I'm so thankful. My family is so thankful. Uh, this is a special guest. I have a lot of special guests. But this person is one of those people who made me come back and do this channel again. I want you to introduce my spe very special guest. She is a consultant in anesthesia and critical care, Dr. Nandita. Good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Cesar. It's so nice to see you looking so well. Uh, and you're looking much better than the last time I saw you when I interviewed you uh, for the Philippine Society of Critical Care Medicine uh, Symposium. At that time, we, I, I interviewed you as one of my patients. Thank you uh, very but much. yes, you are one of my colleagues as well. That is, comes first. You are one of the nursing staff from the hospital um, and my colleagues. So that is very important for me. Thank you very much, Doc. Doc, I just want, this is my chance also to thank you so much for behalf of my family, my, my wife and kids. I also want you to just share some things that you, uh, reason why you thought uh, I uh, I have to fight on and not and survive this COVID-19 because I also want this, this to be learned by other people how dangerous COVID-19 is. Or on that situation you were there, uh, how do I look like? And there's, I know there's so many things happening. I was sleeping. So anything that you could share, remember things that you could yeah. still remember? Yes, of course, I, I will keep within the limits of confidentiality. Uh, but uh, Caesar, COVID-19 is here to test us. I think something has come here to test us. Um, and whether it will go on for a considerable period of time, one never knows because you know at present that Philippines, your your home country, and which I love because I go there, I go there to teach um, as part of my social work as well um, in the various meetings. Um, and I was going to, it was going to be my third time when I was going to go there last March where I had to post, I got a call saying, no, I, I don't think it's getting very dangerous here. And I, I was in another country in Australia teaching and then came back, um, I had to cancel the trip. And it was really, really bad then. And Caesar, you were one of our first. Uh, lot isn't it to get admitted and in April I remember and I saw you mainly ventilated and really really unwell now COVID is still uh, remember it is you might be sometimes feeling why me why not others you know these things happen yeah, I do understand patients mind. yes uh, and it is known to be more in males as compared to females okay. males are um, sadly more affected there is more incidence of admission they and hospitalization and becoming critically ill in because i think there is genetic predisposition to um, to that as well so it's more in males more in patients who got hypertension as well um, okay. and diabetes and chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease and immunosuppression due to cancer they are more susceptible as well um, and the other thing uh, which is there is slightly in the obese population everybody if you say BMI of more than 25 yes. then more majority, quite a few people come in it so and another thing is there was a higher incidence in the black and Asian minority ethnic population. Yeah, that's so. And so. I looked at an article in the Nursing Times, this was last year, and they were really concerned that, yes, we know that around 66%, you know, of the um, NHS working staff or more than that will be of the BAME population. And out of that, uh, we have um, a lot of um, Filipino nurses and all, which were more than 40,000, I think they are in this country. Mm -hmm. And there was a concern at that time that the death rates amongst Filipino healthcare workers and affections of the um, disease itself was quite high. Mm -hmm. um, and we did see that in the first wave, basically, a lot, quite a few Filipino. Uh, nurses are not being affected uh, and that and there is higher mortality rate as well amongst the wave population that was with the first wave we have to yet analyze the whole second wave so these it makes it and second thing is uh, uh, 
we tend to go to a lot of social functions don't mm-hmm. we so there's That's more chances that. of spread by the respiratory people know people have read by this time everybody you must have read everything in google and everybody knows but still we have to be very careful we should not let our guard down because there can be asymptomatic transmission as well and especially if you are healthcare personnel then you have to be more careful because you might have patients who are coming in with that the other thing is apparent is large social gatherings large like choir practices yes parties. religious functions and all the chances of spread is much higher mm-hmm. and at that time you know we let our we forget about things oh we are in contact with people we are slow, you know such distances are so even now wearing masks keep us keeping social distancing you know washing your hands is still very very important for us so that's where uh, i came. and with you with you or anybody you are young you, you are young uh, but it was found that amongst age group of 45 to 64 as well males were quite affected as compared to females uh, i think you come in that age category yes, and no. um yes they were first wave we found that people were really really ill lots of people were ventilated mm-hmm. but as a team um caesar we never give up we don't want know, to we want our patients to get better which doctor or which nurse you are a nurse so you know that you always want your patients yes, to get the smile and go so we did we wanted to keep going uh, anyway we try and keep going for which a patient unfortunately the disease is such worldwide millions of people are affected by it so many people are dying because of it and it's sad but i should say that i you know team effort team encouragement as well as your positive thinking and i remember coming to your your um bed and saying do this come on caesar you are you have to get better you know i don't know whether you remember me at least some some come some of it i do actually i'm going to ask you something uh, whether yeah. i was hallucinating when i said covid just flew away i don't know if i was the one talking to you that time or the, the so in intensive care people many a times don't remember um they ha- remember what has happened because we are giving drugs to keep you asleep to tolerate the ventilator especially when you are put many patients are turned prone that is on their tummy so when they, we have to give something to put them to sleep isn't it and to so that they can tolerate all this so people tend to forget and That's that true, is no. normal so they have a gap between say what happened, what happened yes few weeks ago few days Correct. ago that's true Correct. they don't remember and sometimes it takes some time to get to the um to the reality sometimes people won't remember it at all sometimes people get nightmares and you can tell better about nightmares mm. about things some people thought because of our pp some people mm. thought we were aliens one of the <laughs> yeah one of the uh, patients who got extubated she said who are you you look like an alien and then really? oh, wow. one of the doctor so oh. yeah so this is this is very very common and there's going to be a lot of ptsd as you know you mentioned in i seen one of your this and not only ptsd amongst the patients but ptsd amongst the doctors and nurses really, and yeah. well. so we all need to support each other that's true um, so that is one thing yeah thank you very much doc for informing us informing all the people how dangerous covid and at least you gave all the ideas to how yeah. we are going to watch out and how to look after uh just to confirm coming from you doc we still can be reinfected after we had the covid isn't it doc just to just to certify can, to yeah. a person like you you still do do you doc yes you can it's important for us to get vaccinated because that will reduce the incidence and incidence of transmission as well and severity of the disease that we will not be able to completely protect anybody possibly from infection the vaccine won't be this however if you maintain social distancing and mask and all these um, you know what we were doing in the first year washing hands be careful about that not just because the lockdown is now you are allowed to meet mm. just go mad and go and you know have lo- loads of big gatherings if you avoid all these things the the chances will be less again as i said people can get infected uh, but however the 
severity of disease may be less it's different from being infected and how severe the symptoms will be uh, but that doesn't mean that just because you've had both the vaccinations that you do not observe uh, precautions even now so very important for all especially healthcare staff as well because we are going to get patients also who are going to come into hospitals and everything and you know so we have to be careful please don't let it down Thank again you. um and it is for yourself it's for yourself you protect yourself and the family uh, and your friends by having your vaccinations as well so we are trying to encourage we are trying to do videos about people who've had their vaccinations and all and i've had both my vaccinations hey, um, in december and january makes me feel much much safer safer um, that's true doc yeah. doc before we finish i know you're so busy i'm very thankful for your time no you were mentioning that you came back to the philippines can you just give us a short idea when did you start and what is all about this been lecturing speaking giving me yeah. teachings doc so i am um, there are various uh, conferences in um philippines in critical care medicine and heart failure conference and also i was invited in march 2019 and uh, november 2019 i went with, i paid my own airfare and went there it was not that uh, yeah um and we so we i i taught on various subjects in the conference i gave talks and i was i was about to go in march of 2020 when covid struck so i had to come back straight so then in november 2020 the conference was sort of cancelled we had various webinars but just uh, in march we had another virtual conference whereby we discussed various things there, there were various themes about covid and non covid mainly covid um and it is a good way of sharing our experiences um i learn a lot and so the so they they learn from me i learn from them and we share our experiences and as a result of sharing our experiences it's going to be very good because you know the wave started here our wave is coming down and then the other wave continues i've sent you a few pictures as well which you're going oh, to put up oh thank you very much doc and and the other thing is that um i've started a mental well-being project as well oh, okay. for staff members who mm -hmm. have seen a lot of these deaths, of deaths and everything and yeah yes it's really bad so Stressful. if i can help it's my way caesar of helping people if re if required uh, because that's that's a little thing we can do as human beings that's to true. help ease the suffering of other people and i'll continue to do that i love the philippines i i as i twice i've been there and was would have gone third time as well uh, but if i can in the future uh, i will definitely go there i've made lots of friends um, and these people were unknown to me a year to, you know before march 2019 i didn't know them yes, um, they just happened to call me because i gave talks in other places as well and it was great it was great and it is very great to help each other i think especially in this pandemic That's we have to be very uh, good to each other life is too short That's so thank you very much doc thank, thank you so you. much thank you god bless and this is very important to me and to my family this interview thank you doc thank you very much for your time and take and care to you to and my aunt and all the all your, your kids as well thank you very much thank you very me. much doc bye doc bye bye this is Caesar a martial artist photographer and a dad have a good day thank you very much doctor nandita goodbye